Hi everybody, my name is Leo with the California Department of Veterans Affairs. We are part of the newly formed California Transition Assistance Program. Our program is, however, meant to assist veterans at any point in their transition from uh, military to civilian life. We have a lot of veterans that don't get um, in, don't get connected with any of the benefits, any anything like that, until later on in life. So the new program will be meant to um, assist veterans with that. Uh, I am the Education Pathway Specialist over at CalVet. Um, I'm supposed to be the expert, but please don't put that pressure on me. Um, I will be giving a presentation on education and best practices. Uh, if at any time you have any questions, you know, just you know, let me know. We'll stop. We're also going to have time afterwards to answer any questions that you guys have. So these are the benefits you're probably most familiar with. Chapter 30 is Montgomery. Chapter 31, which is something that we like to recommend. Uh, it's uh, the uh, vocational rehabilitation. Chapter 33, which is I'm assuming is what most of you are on. And then chapter 35, which is of course for our dependents of 100% service connected disabled veterans. A lot of you guys already know this. A lot, a lot of you guys and girls already know this. 36 months for that post 9-11. And that's something we're gonna be talking about today. Graduation requirements. Hopefully you guys have already started to take a look at this. Um, I'm assuming most of you are trying to transfer. Maybe not, but I'm assuming most of you are. It takes 120 credits if you are transferring over to the CSU system. So if you want to go to San Francisco State, your, the number of uh, credits that you're taking here should equal to 60. The number of credits over there should equal 60. Most of us are going to be taking a lot more than that. Most of us don't qualify uh, to get into straight into, in, into college algebra. So the most are going to require a little bit of English. So a lot, so the number of credits you end up taking are going to be a lot more. Um, if you're enrolled full time, 12 units for fall and spring, and take six units for summer semester, chapter 33 will only cover 116 units. So once again, this is if you have taken no prerequisite classes. So you, you automatically, you know, qualify to get into those normal classes. Chapter 33 will not cover your entire uh, college college degree. You will have to come out of pocket. 180 credits per quarter system for those of you trying to go into the UC system. So if you have any other questions about that, please come talk to me. Why are we all going to CCSF? It's a big reason. Because you're getting $4,197 for your monthly housing allowance. I believe I was talking to Jose that there are some people that actually fly in from Texas to once a week to attend college here because the BAH is so high, or MHA. Um, three quarter time, $3,100, uh, 30, so yeah, around that 3900. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody ever used this GI Bill comparison tool? For those of you trying to transfer, please use this. It'll give you a lot of good information about the school itself, how much they and, and how much they pay out. So one of the big things that we want to highlight is you need to budget. You need to budget. You need to budget. Right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, especially if you live here. I said, especially if you live here, like 41, 4197 looks like a lot. <laughs> but if you live in the city, it's not that much. There's a reason it's at 40, it's at 4100. It's because the cost of living is so high. And I know a lot of you are going to be commuting, living with roommates, everything else. Um, one of the big points that we want to put out here is how important that budgeting process is. Um, Hopefully we get a little bit more. Okay, rate of pursuit. It might be more beneficial for you to take more than 12 units. If you take 15 units, <laughs> if you take 18 units, the VA will still cover that amount of cover those units, and it will not take away any more than have you, than you having taken 12 units. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. They're not going to pay you any more than $4,100, but 
But what that's going to end up doing is that's going to end up saving you money in the long run. Because remember, every time you take 12 units, that's one month off from your GI bill. So in this case, if you take 15 units, you're still getting the same amount. But chapter 13 will still cover full amount, and this could lead to uh, graduating, you know, a semester earlier. That's that. That's that whole 120 unit case. Okay. Um, 18 units is more, but what's the, what's what's the con with that though? 18 units is a lot of units to take. Can you handle that? You know, and that's something that you're gonna have to find out. Some people can't. Me, I found out my sweet spot was three quarter time. If I took 12 for some reason, all my you know grades started going. Three quarter time was that was the perfect sweet spot, and, and and you're gonna have to find that out on your own. VA work study. Where the work studies at in here? No. No. Anybody else here familiar with work study? No? Okay. This is open to any student veteran using any USDVA chapter enrolled at least a quarter time. So, the positives about work study is you can fit it around your class schedule. All right? You can fit it around your location because you don't just have to work here at CCSF. There are other places all around the state that you can work as a VA work study. It's tax free. It's only minimum wage, but it's tax free, fitted around your schedule. Um, it gives you an opportunity to interact with veterans and dependents. I was a work study, absolutely loved it. You know, it, it I was proud of my job, even though half of it was just answering phone calls, you know, uh, trying to help out fellow veterans and dependents. Introduction into employment at the county, state, and federal level. So these numbers right here, for the state of California, we uh, approximately 5.5% of our uh, populate of our um, employees are veterans. This number right here, 52,000 plus, 43% of the new hires at in, in, in uh, at the federal levels were veterans themselves. So. I know a lot of us have a lot of dreams, and you know, you know we're gonna do this and this and this, and somehow we end up falling into government work. And that's not a bad thing. It's structured somewhat similarly to like the military. And guess what? They like to hire us. So, you know, it's important. This is just explaining, uh, this is straight from the US, uh, US Department of Veterans Affairs website, explaining um, how the VA work study program works and uh, how it pays. So if the state minimum wage is higher than the federal minimum wage, you will get the state minimum wage. If the federal is higher than the state minimum wage, you will get the federal minimum wage. Does that make sense? You're giving me a little bit. Yeah, because I don't know, like, <laughs> the way my, my contract is written out, mm -hmm. the state minimum wage, mm -hmm. yeah, never mind. Because I'm thinking of this area. The minimum wage for this area is a lot more than the rest yeah, of the state. State, yeah, state. The rest yeah. of the state, but the state is, okay. yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's based, based on, on the state. No. It's based on the state wage, not the county itself. Yeah. Okay. But WP also, right? You get the <laughs> no. So the VA work study is tax free. It's tax free. It's tax free. So, I mean, tax season comes around, you know, you're not getting a check. <coughs> you know exactly how much you're going to be making, which helps you what? Helps you budget, right? <coughs> so. Number of hours cannot be more than 25 times the number of weeks in enrollment period. If you're in, that's something else for a little bit later. So, <coughs> if you're enrolled three quarter time, you're making that number, which is wrong, sorry. 20 hours per week, $210. If you have 18 weeks, which is the normal length for your San Francisco City, for uh, CCSF, that's 450 hours. You multiply that by, you know, by the minimum wage, you're making an extra $4,725 per semester. Now, why would you want to do that? You go down to three quarter time, remember, you're only using three quarters of your benefit. So every four months, guess what? That's like adding another month to your GI Bill that you're going to school. Does that make sense? So. If you're only getting certified for three-quarter time, you add in VA work study at 
one of the locations all throughout the state of California, you can save your GI Bill, which, hey, you might even be able to use for graduate school. <coughs> yeah. I'm sorry. So you don't have to, you don't have to be using your, your GI Bill to be a VA work study? You do have to use your GI Bill to be a work study, but what I'm saying is if you, if you get certified at less, if you get certified for three-quarter time, you're saving, a quarter of your, you're saving a quarter of your benefit every single month. Mm -hmm. You can still take 12 units, but if you only get certified for three-quarter time, yes, the amount that you're going to pay, get paid per month is less, but if you add in VA work study to that, you're almost... Uh, an extra month. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right? <clears throat> so... Everybody knows the difference between a withdrawal versus an F and how that's going to affect your, your GPA, your eligibility. Mm -hmm. okay. So a withdrawal may not affect your GPA, but it may affect your monthly housing allowance. It will affect your monthly housing allowance, fact. Um, I was one of those guys. Kept dropping classes, kept wondering how much it was going down. An F will not affect the stipend if the minimum attendance requirement was met, but will affect the GPA and the remaining number of Chapter 33 months available. Oh, so you lose it. Exactly. Can you say that one more time? Yeah, you, you lose the, the time that you use. You lose the time. So if you get an F, you're still going to get paid as long as your butt is in the seat, but it's taken away from the amount of benefits that you have left. Now, if you already know you're going to get an F and you decide to stop going to class and your professor marks that down, guess what? That month that you weren't there at class, you're not getting paid for that. And the VA will come back after you for that. So, just FYI. I'm not saying all you guys are going to fail classes, but life happens. You know, I, there's a semester that I, I always remember this day. It was four straight Fs. You know, because what? Life happened. Don't give up. But also, please be aware of what's going to happen. That way you can prepare. So Voc Rehab, Chapter 31, this is what I was talking about earlier. Um, it's open to veterans who have a disability rating of 20% or higher. Um, now, uh, it's education and job placement. However, a little bit restrictive on what major uh, you can choose. So it may not necessarily be the best fit, but in some cases it is. The best thing to do is to talk to a voc rehab counselor. If you are thinking, you know, if you haven't filed for a disability rating and you're thinking about it, once again, this is one of the incentives to do that. There are a lot of veterans, we run across veterans all the time who just, you know, you know, they can't hear, their knees hurt, their back hurt, and they still do not want to go in the VA for, you know, for whatever reason, and that's fine. So if you're one of those veterans, or if you know one of those veterans, please, you know, well, one of our biggest tools is word of mouth, and, you know, helping out our brothers and sisters. So just, if they, please, please remember that. There's a 48-month uh, timeline for the completion of the degree. There are extenuating circumstances where that can be extended. But don't, it's not a guarantee, but they're not certain circumstances. A lot of people that, a lot of my friends, what they do is they will use up most of their GI Bill. They realize how much time they have left. They have a disability rating. They talk to a voc rehab counselor. Their majors match. They switch over to voc rehab. And that actually ends up allowing them to finish out their degree. You get a free computer too, by the way. <laughs> Got to be uh, approved by a voc rehab counselor. Anybody here know about? Yeah. Yeah. Just asking about voc rehab. Yeah, yeah. In order to get the post 9 11 rate, though, you have to apply for voc rehab before your post 9 11 is gone. Right? You need at least one day left on your Chapter 33 or educational benefit or Chapter 33 in order to maintain the same VA rate. So if this is something that you're thinking about doing or one of your friends is thinking about doing, you need to let them know they got to do it before their post 9-11 runs out. Otherwise, they get capped at the amount of money that they can make, which here in San Francisco can mean either getting paid $800 per month or $4,100 per month. It's a is that based on the area you're training? Say I have a program that I'm going to in 
Alameda County mm -hmm. for my internships in Fresno. Where are they going to pay me on based on that? I believe it's going to be Alameda County, but don't quote me on that and we'll, we'll talk again in a second. But yeah, good question. California tuition fee waiver. Um, every state has different benefits <laughs> for their veterans. And one of the ones that, Calif that, we're, that we're very proud of here in California is that if your child wants to go to school here in California and you have a 0% service connected disability rating, they can go to school for free all the way through to their doctorate. Okay? You do not have to live here in California as long as you're dependent lives in California and you have at least a 0%, 0%, 0% rating, they will get their tuition waived at any state funded school here in California. No age limit? Like there, there, is no age, there is no age limit, there is however an income restriction, but it's not your income, it's their income. Because they could be like the age and the doctor. Correct. As long as they are under what's called the federal poverty level, which changes every year. And as long as they are considered a resident of California, which is determined by each specific school. Wait, zero percent does not mean you do not have a disability rating, but it does mean that you actually have to go to the VA. You have to get checked out. It means they consider you a disabled veteran, but not enough to comp to you know compensate you as far as you know. You can do that for hearing most of the time. And that's at any UC, CSU, or community college system, all the way through to their doctorate. Okay? Thank you very much for your time. And do we have any questions? Yeah. Uh, the Calvet has programs for like, you need to go to private school with a like, yellow room. Uh, that they would accept and they, they pay, but not really. to the state of California, but the Yellow Ribbon Program. Let's say, let's say you know, you end up going to Stanford, all right? Will the GI Bill cover your tuition at Stanford? Uh, no. Why won't it cover the GI your tuition at Stanford? Because the GI Bill will only cover the most expensive state school in your state. I haven't looked at the tuition of Stanford. I know it's nothing yeah, that I can tell right? right? So then that's what the Yellow Ribbon Program does. The Yellow Ribbon Program will cover another part of that. That still probably won't be covered. Mm -hmm. Things though, when you get into one of those schools like a Stanford or like you know, <coughs> USF, then a lot of the times your these schools will work with you. A lot of the schools right now want veterans. You know? We bring something different to the table. So please, remember your strengths. Don't let anybody remind you about, you know, quote unquote weaknesses that we have. Remember the strengths that we have. Okay? Um, last, yeah. I'm sure you have more information you're going to give out, but yeah. um, the Voc Rehab reps, um, can we get, I mean, we can give that information out. Yeah. So, one of the things that you guys benefit here at CCSF, at Skyline, is that you have the VITAL program, which is something that okay. we... Also known as the... Yeah. And that's something that we, I, we don't have in Sacramento, you know, in Sacramento. That's where I'm from. Take advantage of all the resources that you have on campus here because you have a lot of resources here on campus. Um, but yes, that's something that we can talk about. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. One kind of piece of that, though, there isn't necessarily just like a list of book rehab counselors that you can kind of talk to necessarily. You will have Carrie occasionally come in and do a talk. But one of the things that's tricky when you're switching over to book rehab is you have to apply usually online for the same process you would do to do your GI Bill. And it can take six to eight weeks for them to process your benefits. So it's true that you only need one day left of your post 9 11 GI Bill. But if you apply the day before that expires, then you may lose out because it does take a while. So I would recommend having at least, you know, three months in the bank before you start applying for book rehab. And also you can talk to them and you can tell them when you want it to kick in. So say you're still going to school and you say, you know, before your last day, you're like, I want it to be activated the week before. And then they'll kick it in 
that week before you run out and stuff like that. So you, you can talk to your individual counselor or whatever, but they're they're really specialized to you, like your plan and your needs. It's only approved majors. Mm, no, it could be a lot of things, but it you it's a it's a one on one basis because everybody's situation is different. So you have to get everything approved through the counselor. Okay. It's better to do it probably sooner than later. Yes. Yeah. I mean, something to know about too is health rehab is geared to getting you into an appointment, not necessarily giving you more education. So if your if what your goal, your vocational goal doesn't require more school, uh, it might require it. Don't we think they'll approve that? They're not going to necessarily pay for you to keep going to school if it's not for the job that they want. Okay. Uh, that can happen with the degree, right? What kind of degree you have? I mean, like, of course you have a degree, but I need more on, on computer learning and all that stuff. Uh, I could pick that in after I, I use up my ID right now. It all depends on what your voc rehab counselor kind of, and you agree to. So like you were saying, it's that piece around your individual agreement with the voc rehab counselor that you're working with. So you would apply, they would determine whether you're eligible, they would set you up for an orientation. During that time, you usually meet with the counselor, and that's when they help determine, you know, what's your plan for employment and what what kind of goal can they support. Sometimes it's good to have a few goals in mind of what you might be interested in, so that if Plan A isn't something they're willing to support, maybe Plan B would be or Plan C. Yeah, it's very extensive. They give you like a packet, and they kind of go through the progressions of what's your main goal, what's your secondary goal, and if this doesn't happen what's your plan C, you know, so uh, you're able to talk to them and as long as it's kind of going towards your same goal, then they're pretty flexible about the things that you can do, but they want you to kind of have a game plan going in to like set you up for success. And you sign a contract, you know, saying that you got to stay on track for that. So anybody know how, anybody know what the number of, the, the average amount of debt students are coming out with right now, about 30 grand. So that's average. Um, that's why, you know, it's one of the reasons for this uh, presentation is, you know, we want, we want to try to avoid that as much as possible. Another thing that I didn't add on the slide is how many of here have signed up for FAFSA? How many here are using financial aid? It was. It was. Sign up for it. Yeah. One of the things I learned in the military is that closed mouths don't get fed, right? You know it grinds my gears though. <laughs> it really grinds my gears because I get fast mode. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, well if I get fast mode and I lose my GI bill, my GI bill's not doing anything for me. It's not paying anything. Yeah. It's just paying me to go to school and live here. Well, That's all it's doing. Correct, yeah. It's but, just not paying for my school. But you're getting more. Yeah. But you still are getting more. Um, and when you get over to when you transfer over, uh, you know, you're gonna be getting the Calgram and, and, and the state grant or the Cal Grant and the Pell Grant. The Cal Grant is actually going to pay for everything first. The GI Bill pays for the remainder. And if you get the Pell Grant, you end up getting get the cash yeah. And the other thing on FAFSA is that if um, you have to use it before you reach a certain number of credits. Yeah. Because, right. uh, if you reach a certain credit amount, they won't, uh, it doesn't matter if you ever used it or not, they won't, they won't uh, assist you with anything. So if you're just starting out, and um, you know you you could use the extra income or whatever. It's not going to hurt you to apply for it. Um, and they hook you up. But if you've got a high number of credits, uh, you might want to start before uh, you lose out. Absolutely correct. Start now. Start early. Um, so lastly, oh, yeah. Yeah, something. It's worth doing the past too because there are some. I'm sure you guys have run into um, at the breaks. Or um, different semesters or the full month. So there are months that you end up getting less than you're anticipating or that you think you're going to get. And so those extra months to help cover rent is good to get. Yeah, especially during like, the summer and stuff like that. Because uh, that's another thing you might want to talk about, like the summers, wh whether you might want to weigh if it's worth it for you or not, because you lose what, a month and a half? Or you start losing time for that summer. But once again, this is where. The GI Bill comparison tool comes into play. This is where rate of pursuit comes into play. This is where doing that math is incredibly important. You know, talk to your talk to a counselor, write it all out. It might take a day, but you know, I remember those times in between fall and spring, in between spring and fall, because I didn't. I was one of the, I was I was one of those. I saved my benefits during the summer, where you really got to plan. 
I was a, so I'm a Navy vet myself, 2002 to 2006. I've been in the reserves off and on since 2008. Um, I struggled. I absolutely struggled um, my first time out. And I joined the reserves, got mobilized, and decided to give it another go. And if it wasn't for the Veterans Resource Center at the schools that I went to in Sacramento, you know, I would not have graduated. Um, coming here and seeing the amount of services that they have at this school and the Skyline, um, no excuses, you know. These, you know, the people here will help you out if you ask for it. Um, and not only that, you know, you have your brothers and sisters here to help you out too. So thank you for your time. If you have any questions offline, please, we'll be here for a little bit. Okay. Thank you.